the royal wedding has just gone, the Olympics are still to come, but the UK still isn't getting as many tourists as it could. Why? Visas. Delays, uh, intrusive questions, refusals without any reasons. These are all things that are discouraging our visitors. From the temples of Began to the volcanoes of Rwanda, join me later in the programme for Insider Guide. And I'm here in Buenos Aires, Argentina to take a crash course in polo. Hello and welcome to Fast Track. I'm Rajan Datta. Now behind me is the new hugely impressive stadium for next year's London Olympics, an event which I think will be one of the finest spectacles of sport ever witnessed. And tickets for the big athletics finals will be like gold dust. But for many potential visitors, getting hold of these will be child's play compared to actually getting in to the UK. Britain today is a powerhouse. My dear imagination. Getting the inside track on London's Grand Olympic project. But it's Britain that has to learn how to keep up with its rivals in the race to entice overseas visitors. Take one example. Germany welcomes six times more tourists and France eight times more from China, the world's fastest growing tourist nation. There has been a shift in economic power in the last few years towards Asia, Latin America, Africa. And this is going to form the basis of tourist development in the next few years. And we need to attract these people. But unfortunately, we're not. Losing an estimated 600,000 tourists a year, many from emerging nations in Asia, on the face of it is puzzling. English is often the second language in these countries, and the UK's history and culture have a special appeal. The reason appears to be red tape, bureaucracy, and the more stringent entry hurdles required by British immigration. I found that some, actually some of my friends, because they, were, they had no connection with us, actually struggled to get some visa to come over here. And my cousin, who's just here, um, she did manage to get a visa because I had to write an official letter to invite her around. And um, on the letter it showed my address, my name, and I suppose the embassy must have searched into our details and allowed her to, to have a visa. Travel operators abroad share these frustrations. Today, Indians are travelling. The Indian outbound market is one of the highest growth markets. And I believe that uh, the visas is the single biggest issue uh, for the Western world to deal with when it comes to attracting the Indian new tourist. South Africa have recently had uh, a visa imposed upon them and uh, their travel to the UK has fallen by somewhere in the region of 9 to 10 percent so it has a definite disadvantage whereas countries such as Taiwan have had uh, visa, um, visa regulations taken away and they, are increased, they have increased their travel hit by uh, about 40 percent so it does have a negative or a positive effect depending on, on which way uh, you look at it. Well, you've been emailing us with your experiences and frustrations with trying to get a visa to come into the UK. Jason Hooper from South Africa was typical of many of you. He says... The UK visa is a very long and tiresome process involving a lot of time and money. I couldn't be bothered to go through that. I now meet my UK friends and family in Europe. Kwaku Kumi from Ghana wonders about the hike in visa fees for travellers from his country. The UK is trying to rake in as much revenue from every source. For developing countries that are receiving support from the UK, it looks like the UK gives with one hand and takes with the other. The UK government's Home Office claimed that 97% of applications are granted, but critics say this figure excludes the sizeable number who give up during the process itself. One in four applicants, according to the ETOA. So what are the obstacles exactly on the road to getting a visa? Well, some people say that could become an Olympic sport in itself. If you're a Chinese person, you need to fill out your visa application in English. Now, let's take it the other way. If you're an English person visiting China, would you like to fill out your visa application in Mandarin? 
There's two issues, I guess. One is the bio, getting biometric visas, whereby whole families have to go to a visa center to have uh, their fingerprints taken and to have an eye scan. So physically, they actually have to go to a visa center, which could be hundreds of miles away from where they live. Someone's knocking at the door. Somebody ringing the bell. More than 100 countries require visas to visit the UK, highlighting the great disadvantage, so the complaint goes, of not being part of the so-called Schengen Agreement between many other European countries. The UK, for example, you have to pay £76 for a visa and you get one country for that. If you go to Schengen, you pay €60 Euros for a visa, which is about £55, and for that you can get into 25 countries. So it's not good value. Tourism is a means of tasting new cultures and experiencing new environments. It's also big business. And there's serious competition between different countries and regions. Where do you want to be? In the UK, tourism is worth $150 billion a year, which in the current context should be so much higher, according to the tourism industry here. So why can't the UK be part of a Schengen-style agreement? Well, it stems in part from a culture of fear around security and of temporary visas being used illegally by visitors to create permanent residence. A WikiLeaks expose only last week highlighted concerns in the US that many Indian visas to the United States are fraudulent. Nothing perhaps better sums up the ambivalence of the British government towards this issue than two recent speeches by the Prime Minister David Cameron. On the one hand, last August, he implored the tourism industry to boost visitor numbers. And I want to see us in the top five destinations in the world. That should be our ambition. And that means being much more competitive internationally. Take Chinese tourists, for example. Right now, we are the 22nd most popular destination. Germany, Germany is forecast to break into their top ten. Now why can't we do that? But then on the other hand, more recently, he delivered a speech emphasizing the dangers of people sneaking into the country via the back door. For years, people have been playing the system, exploiting the easiest routes of entry to the UK. But now, because of what we're doing, this country finally has consistent controls right across the immigration system. As it happens, Schengen is under the microscope currently as France raises questions about an influx of refugees from North Africa. But tourist bodies in the UK are lining up with advice as to how, without a Schengen-style agreement, the UK could expedite the application process before it's too late. Sharing visa processing um, centres overseas with countries like America and Australia so we get much more accessibility for Chinese residents to be able to apply for a British visa. Visa forms in English, uh, standard uh, turnaround times, um, online applications, uh, reasons for refusal, these are all areas that are really quite simple to address. Tourism in the UK is its fifth largest industry, accounting for two million jobs. That, say critics, is still not good enough, especially when high-profile, once-in-a-lifetime events like the Olympics are about to take place. You must be frustrated because every day that goes by is a day when tourism is being driven away from this country towards your rivals. It means we have to work much harder to promote Britain overseas and to tell people what a great welcome they will get when they get here. I don't want to see, like I've been seeing, adverts in the Indian press saying if you're turned down for a British visa, come to Schengen countries. We want to be one of the countries of choice. We've had a huge opportunity with the Royal Wedding. We have the Olympics next year. We want to be welcoming um, visitors to Britain. This is our moment to showcase Britain and we want to absolutely make the best use of that. Well, we asked the UK government's tourism minister, John Penrose, to appear on Fast Track and deal with some of the issues raised in the programme. Unfortunately, and not for the first time, he was unable to do so. However, his department did issue this statement. We want to make the visa process for prospective visitors easier, simpler and more convenient. We're currently looking at a number of ways to achieve this. 
We're currently working with colleagues across government on these proposals and we'll be agreeing an implementation plan with the Home Office shortly. Well, we hope that those of you who are experiencing frustration at the current state of affairs have the patience to wait for this implementation plan. Right, let's see what else is making news in the world of travel this week. The rules for carrying liquids onto planes bound for Europe have been partially relaxed. Passengers who buy duty-free products outside the EU will be able to carry the goods onto their connecting flights at some European airports. But not all countries are prepared for the changes. There is this patchwork of, of readiness right across the continent and I'm afraid it's going to cause quite a lot of confusion for people who are travelling uh, in and through uh, European airports in the coming months. Experts are advising tourists to stick with the 100 milliliter limit on liquids to avoid having larger duty-free goods confiscated. Review site Hotel Chatter has called for all hotels to provide free Wi-Fi. Their annual report has named New York and Hong Kong as some of the best cities for free Wi-Fi and Las Vegas and Sydney as two of the worst. They advise tourists to check Wi-Fi prices before they book a room. And unruly passengers flying with Hong Kong Airlines would need to watch out. Flight attendants are being trained in a form of Kung Fu to deal with those who disrupt flights. The training will be a requirement for all cabin crew. And my advice would be, don't mess with those dudes, even if you don't get your first choice of meal on the plane. Well, stay with us, because coming up after the break, something else that might give you some aches and pains too. We try our hand at the not-so-genteel sport of polo. 